Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Samuels. I work for Allegheny Cleanways. We're a nonprofit organization that works in Allegheny County to clean up illegal dump sites and litter. We've been doing it for 20 years and today we're going to be talking trash. We have this you know, amazing planet we live on that has you know really deep and powerful natural systems that we only understand the outer edges of and it's worthy of you know taking some time and taking note and taking a look at that and then also it becomes especially important in the face of our sometimes misuse of those systems. We live in an amazing city with a wild history. There used to be so much more industry here and so many more people here and We've got this opportunity to take care of all of this new green space that we have that wasn't here 50 or 60 years ago. As we're cruising along the riverbanks now, we're passing all sorts of areas that uh, if we got close to them, it's thick with trash. We could have filled up this boat four times over and it's just hard to actually see it thinking that um, you know that we have a systems problem more than we have an individual's problem and a lot of our systems are Allegheny up. Cleanways has two cleanup programs. Our land-based cleanup program is called Dump Busters. Our Dump Busters crew works year-round to remove illegal dump sites all over Allegheny County. That means that we're working in the snow, the rain, and the hot sun. Our team consists of two crew members and countless volunteers that are dedicated to keeping our county clean and beautiful. We find dump sites on both hillsides and streets in our neighborhoods. We never know what we will find in the dump sites that we clean up, but the main items that we remove include televisions, tires, furniture, and renovation debris. Over the last 10 years, our dump busters have removed over 22,000 tires and 2.8 million pounds of trash from Allegheny County. Another portion of our land-based cleanups is our Adopt a Storm Drain program called Great Keepers. Volunteers adopt a storm drain in their local neighborhood and remove debris from the tops of them to prevent it from entering our waterways. We will be learning more about storm drains and their impacts on our rivers and streams later in this video. Another one of the programs that Allegheny Cleanways has is our water-based cleanup program called the Tireless Project. One part of my job is coordinating and planning riverfront cleanups all over the county through this program. We have a 28-foot pontoon boat, the Rachel Carson, that we take volunteers out on to clean trash that accumulates along the riverbanks. We've gathered a few videos to highlight the work that the Tireless Project does. gotten into taking volunteers out on the river and love that, love cleaning up and love just sharing um, my love for this with other people, taking, on people, taking people on adventures out on the river. But unfortunately we find a lot of single-use plastics and that's something we don't like to find, but we find that's the majority of it. So that's the biggest problem we're seeing and we're trying to tackle it. We have volunteers out everywhere cleaning up plastic as we speak. Plastics, by far. I mean, there are just so many forms of plastics. Um, you know, the easiest to see trash out there is water bottles, um, you know, because they float, but we see thousands of um, balls as well, basketballs, footballs, baseballs, softballs, golf balls, field hockey, street hockey, you name it. And then, um, you know, my research both kind of led me to uh, think the same thing, that most of it's coming out of storm drains um, and coming out of uh, creeks that uh were filled uh with garbage from storm drains um you know this is all trash that you know we all see every day on the street and then we magically stop seeing it after there's a big rainstorm and it washes out into the river some of it sinks into the riverbed and a lot of it floats and you know a lot of it's on a long trip down to the gulf of mexico and out into the ocean When you all were asked what items you see littered on the ground the most in Millville, your responses were plastic bottles, cigarette butts, and candy wrappers. All of these items have one thing in common. They're single-use products that people use one time and then they dispose of. While all of these materials have lasting impacts on our environment, 
We're going to take some time and watch a video about how plastic bottles impact our rivers, streams, and oceans. This is the story of three plastic bottles, empty and discarded. Their journeys are about to diverge with outcomes that impact nothing less than the fate of the planet. But they weren't always this way. To understand where these bottles end up, we must first explore their origins. The heroes of our story were conceived in this oil refinery. The plastic in their bodies was formed by chemically bonding oil and gas molecules together to make monomers. In turn, these monomers were bonded into long polymer chains to make plastic in the form of millions of pellets. Those were melted at manufacturing plants and reformed in molds to create the resilient material that makes up the triplet's bodies. Machines filled the bottles with sweet, bubbly liquid, and they were then wrapped, shipped, bought, opened, consumed, and unceremoniously discarded. And now here they lie, poised at the edge of the unknown. Bottle one, like hundreds of millions of tons of his plastic brethren, ends up in a landfill. This huge dump expands each day as more trash comes in and continues to take up space. As plastics sit there being compressed amongst layers of other junk, rainwater flows through the waste and absorbs the water-soluble compounds it contains, and some of those are highly toxic. Together, they create a harmful stew called leachate, which can move into groundwater, soil, and streams, poisoning ecosystems and harming wildlife. It can take bottle one an agonizing 1,000 years to decompose. Bottle 2's journey is stranger, but unfortunately no happier. He floats on a trickle that reaches a stream, a stream that flows into a river, and a river that reaches the ocean. After months lost at sea, he's slowly drawn into a massive vortex where trash accumulates, a place known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Here, the ocean's currents have trapped millions of pieces of plastic debris, this is one of five plastic-filled gyres in the world's seas, places where the pollutants turn the water into a cloudy plastic soup. Some animals, like seabirds, get entangled in the mess. They, and others, mistake the brightly colored plastic bits for food. Plastic makes them feel full when they're not, so they starve to death, and pass the toxins from the plastic up the food chain. For example, it's eaten by lanternfish. The lanternfish are eaten by squid. The squid are eaten by tuna. And the tuna are eaten by us. And most plastics don't biodegrade, which means they're destined to break down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics, which might rotate in the sea eternally. But Bottle 3 is spared the cruel purgatories of his brothers. A truck brings him to a plant where he and his companions are squeezed flat and compressed into a block. Okay, this sounds pretty bad too, but hang in there. It gets better. The blocks are shredded into tiny pieces, which are washed and melted so they become the raw materials that can be used again. As if by magic, Bottle 3 is now ready to be reborn as something completely new. For this bit of plastic with such humble origins, suddenly, the sky is the limit. Here is another video about what an organization is doing to handle the marine debris that we see in the oceans. We love the ocean, and when you love something, you want to protect it. Unfortunately, the ocean is being filled with trash. And people all over the world who care about the health of the ocean are doing something about it. You probably already recycle, and that's a great start. 
So now, let's talk about how you can prevent some of the surprising and sneaky ways that trash flows into our rivers and the ocean. Come learn about marine debris and be part of the action. There's a problem with trash in the ocean all over the world. People are generating more trash than ever, and sometimes that trash travels from cities to streams, rivers, bays, and then into the ocean, where it sometimes causes harm to coastal communities and wildlife. This issue also costs communities money when people avoid beaches and bays because of all the trash. Don't you think it's time we all have an honest trash talk? We love the ocean, like you do, and we want to take care of it. So the burning question I'm sure you're all asking is, what is marine debris? Have you ever been to the beach and noticed litter, like plastic bottles or foam takeout containers on the sand? Or maybe you've been to a river or bay where there's a bag or a car tire stuck in the mud on the shore, or a bunch of deflated balloons that say, happy birthday, floating in the water? All of that junk in the water or on the shoreline is considered marine debris. It's anything solid and man-made in the ocean or Great Lakes that is not supposed to be there. And anything people use every day can become marine debris if they don't dispose of it properly. And I mean anything. The most common items we find when we do shoreline cleanups are plastics. But we also find rubber, cloth, glass, metal, and paper litter. Sometimes the debris is so tiny, like a plastic microbead from your face wash, that you can barely see it in the water. Marine debris is more than just trash in the ocean. Sometimes fishers lose their gear, like fishing traps, nets, or fishing line, and it continues to drift through the water, catching animals for a long time. We call that derelict fishing gear, and it's marine debris. Have you ever seen an old boat left behind on a shoreline? Abandoned and derelict vessels are also marine debris. So let's review. Anything we use every day can become marine debris if we don't dispose of it properly or if it goes into the water by accident. Marine debris can be very small or can be very big and anything in between. But most importantly, marine debris is one of the biggest pollution problems facing the world's oceans and waterways today. Almost four in 10 Americans live in counties directly on the shoreline. So there's a lot of trash generated from cities by the sea and the millions of people who visit our beaches. What might amaze you is all the other places trash can come from and how far it can travel. Where does marine debris come from? Marine debris comes from many different sources and enters the ocean in many ways. Intentional littering and dumping are a big cause of marine debris. Sometimes the trash goes directly into the ocean, like when beachgoers don't pick up after themselves. Or sometimes, marine debris is indirectly generated in a city hundreds of miles from the ocean. When someone litters on the street or parking lot, rainwater can move the trash into storm drains that empty into streams, rivers, and other bodies of water. Or the wind can blow it there. Those rivers and streams can eventually carry the trash to the ocean. Improper or careless waste disposal is another big cause. Have you ever seen an overflowing trash can, but for some reason, people keep putting trash there? Hello, marine debris. Or when someone throws a piece of plastic in the trash, when it should have been recycled. Around the world, many people don't have access to proper waste disposal or recycling, but the trash keeps piling up and it has to go somewhere. It's not just here on land. Marine debris comes from activities out on the water too. People on boats sometimes throw their trash overboard and that's against the law. Or trash can accidentally fall, blow, or wash off vessels into the water. Sometimes fishers lose their fishing gear thanks to storms or passing vessels. Once debris gets to the ocean, it's very difficult to trace the exact source. The bottom line is, marine debris comes from us. Humans are the source and every single person has the power and the responsibility to prevent it. So yes, trash comes from people that live inland, like right here in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. 
The Potomac River flows all the way into the Atlantic Ocean, and all kinds of stuff can end up in the water if people aren't careful. The cherry blossoms are in bloom, and it's beautiful. But look at how much trash people are creating. Bags and bottles can end up in the river, blown by the wind or washed down by the rain. We're going to talk about solutions a little later on. But first, let's have some trash talk about why we should care. How does marine debris impact the ocean, animals, and me? Would you want to swim in a beach littered with trash? Of course not. And the animals who live in the ocean don't either. The difference is, they don't have a choice. Marine species often get tangled in debris, from fishing nets to six-pack rings. If they get caught, they could get injured or even die. And even if they don't get entangled, many animals mistake plastic debris for food and eat it. This fills their stomach with junk they can't digest. Debris can also damage important habitats, like coral reefs, by breaking or smothering them. Corals serve as the base of the marine ecosystem, and impacts here can be felt all the way to you and me. Plus, plastics have harmful chemicals in them. Fish eat plastic, we eat fish. The question is, can those chemicals harm us? Marine debris also hurts the economy. It costs a lot of money to clean up, and people don't want to go to dirty beaches. Boats and ships could run into large pieces of debris too, or get their propellers tangled. We need the ocean and everything in it, and the ocean needs us to keep it free of debris. So now you've heard about all the different kinds of marine debris and their impacts on the ocean. That may seem far away from you, but really, the problem may start in your front yard. When we take out trash and recycling, we need to do a good job of keeping it contained, like we have here. But you can't control it all. So when you pick up your trash and recycling cans, be sure to pitch in and pick up anything that may have fallen out. And they did a really good job here. There's a lot of waste that does end up as marine debris, but by far the most significant material that ends up in the ocean is plastic. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that eight million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. As you can see, trash can flow from your neighborhood into a drain pipe, then down into a stream like the one behind me. And believe it or not, it can make it all the way into the middle of the ocean. What is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Well, first, let's talk about what it's not. 
It's not a floating island of trash, like a garbage dump or a landfill. It's also not the only patch. They exist all throughout the ocean, and the Pacific Garbage Patch just happens to be the most famous. Garbage patches are large areas of marine debris concentration that are formed by rotating ocean currents called gyres, kind of like big whirlpools that suck things in. A garbage patch is made up of tiny plastic pieces called microplastics that are less than five millimeters long. It's more like pepper flakes swirling in a soup than something you can skim off the surface. You might come across some larger items like plastic bottles, but it's possible to sail through a garbage patch and not see anything. And they're a big problem for the ocean and us. People often ask why we can't just scoop up all the marine debris in the ocean. And the answer is, unfortunately, it's just not that simple. The first challenge is the sheer size of these garbage patches. They're huge. They're constantly moving with ocean currents. And there's debris from the ocean surface all the way down to the sea floor. Not to mention all the marine life we would disrupt if we tried to just scoop up debris. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep trash out of the ocean in the first place. And we can participate in things like shoreline cleanups. It's a lot easier to deal with debris before it gets to the ocean. Because until we stop marine debris at the source, we'll just be cleaning it up forever. Communities across the country are coming up with innovative ways to prevent debris from leaving the watershed, like this water wheel here in Baltimore. And also in DC, Missouri, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Honolulu. Innovative solutions are popping up everywhere. Look at all this trash. As you can see, we really need to work on stopping debris at the source. This is one way cities are working on it, but what can you do? Let's dive into how we can prevent trash from entering the water in the first place. What can we do about marine debris? A lot of the trash that's in our ocean is plastic. And that marine debris is hurting our environment, economy, and health. The problem will only get worse. Unless we change the way we consume and dispose of products. There are solutions. And together, we can prevent litter from ending up in the ocean. Some people might say, Well, I'm just one person, so I can't make a difference. But that's just not true. If each person who creates trash, and that's just about everyone, took action, it would add up to a whole lot of change. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep debris out of the ocean in the first place. You can bring your own shopping bag, drink out of a reusable bottle, and participate in things like a shoreline cleanup. Join a group cleaning up the beach or grab some friends and clean up your street. It's easy. Be more conscious of how many disposable plastic items you're using. And if you do, where are you putting it? In the trash can? Whoops. Or in the recycling bin? So here's the challenge. The next time you finish using a throwaway item, a bag, a bottle, or utensil, answer the question, where is this going? Because ultimately, when you throw stuff away, there really is no away. It has to go somewhere. So keep asking yourself this important question. How will you keep your trash from becoming marine debris? Human beings are creating this problem, and it's unhealthy for us, the Earth, and all the creatures depending on it. But we can come together and build a movement and change our relationship with trash, which is why we're encouraging everyone to have a trash talk with their friends, neighbors, family, and even city officials. So we're all in this together. And if we focus on solutions and prevention, we can make the ocean and the Earth a healthy home for everyone. Keeping our oceans clean is incredibly important, but we can work here in Millvale to prevent them from being polluted in the first place. Think about what you can do to keep our streams, rivers, and oceans clean and beautiful. Be sure to talk to your parents about what you learned today and keep the conversation going. Consider what things you can do to prevent trash from entering our waterways.